thank you for joining us today. Thank you. My name is Amanda Boyle and I'm from Roseboro Travel Agency. I really appreciate you coming out. Happy October. Happy National Planet Cruise Month. Um, on behalf of the whole team at Roseboro Travel, we all would like to thank you for coming to Sparrow's Grill to hear from our vendors about cruising the world. So we have three very unique and distinctly different vendors to talk to you today about traveling via cruise ship and very different types of cruise ships. The first one who's going to talk to you today is Melinda and she'll be talking to you from the Globus family of brands about river cruises. So do river cruising. So I'm here today to talk about river cruising and Avalon is our river cruise brand and river cruising is a beautiful way to see destinations where there is a river. It really gets you close to the destination, the heart of the port cities and it's a great way to go. If you haven't done one, we hope you'll consider it over there. So river cruising versus ocean cruising. So ocean cruising is an awesome way to go. I know there's lots of people who kind of collect ships and destinations on big ship cruising. But how does big ship cruising compare to river cruising? Well, first, let's talk about the amount of passengers on the ships, right? So who's done an ocean cruise in the room? OK, I figure who's done a river cruise in the room? All right, all right. So there's some. That's awesome. All right, so the biggest difference is passengers. On big ship cruises, you've got a lot more passengers, on the average about 3,000 passengers on the ships. I just heard of one that's coming out soon that's going to be like 6,500 people. Now that compared to Avalon at a max of 166 passengers it is a huge difference, right? So river cruising, less passengers, more intimate experience with the destination. So river cruising really focuses on the destination. I find with big ship cruising sometimes it's really about the ship a lot of times. So also with river cruising, um, you have more that's complimentary. So with big ship cruising, you're going to pay for your base cruise. And when you get on board, there's more you have to purchase excursions and drinks and other stuff. With river cruising, it's pretty much complimentary. So I say Avalon to 90% inclusive. Why do I say 90 instead of 100? because we have decided not to go all-inclusive with alcoholic drinks. And the reason we've done that is because not everybody drinks. So why should the people who don't drink have to pay the same amount as people you know, who do? You guys shouldn't have to pay for it if you don't drink. So that's why we decided to do it that way. So that's why I say 90% inclusive. So you, you do have alcoholic beverages, though, included with meals. So you do still get that on board. You've got all your meals included throughout the day on the ship. You've got um, excursions every day, so you're going to have more than one excursion some days, depending on the itinerary and how much sailing you're doing. You've got um, robes in the room, slippers in the room. So we really have, again, I would say about 90% inclusive uh, with Avalon. So those are some of the differences between River Cruise and Ocean. All right, so here is a map of the rivers we cruise in Europe. So we have 48 European cruises ranging from 5 to 24 days. We have 15 ships on the Europe rivers. Now where are people cruising in Europe? So the Danube is at 32%. That comes in the highest. The Rhine is next at 30%. France, which is your Seine and Rhone, is at 11%. And then multi-rivers, so people going over and doing, say, the Rhine and the Danube, is at 9%. 5% up here at the top, that's going to be your Holland and uh, Belgium cruises. People do the tulip time, which is, you go in April, see the beautiful tulips. I've had the pleasure of doing that. And um, not listed on here is uh, Southeast Asia, which accounts for 4%. All right, so let's talk about our top sellers. So our top selling itinerary is actually the Rhine, it's the Romantic Rhine. 
So you start in Amsterdam and sail down the Rhine to Basel, or we do the reverse. The next one that comes in, which I'm sure nobody's surprised about, is the Danube. So this is the Blue Danube Discovery. This one starts in Budapest with two nights on land. You do a seven-night river cruise over to Nuremberg, transfer to Prague for three nights on land, and this one does the reverse as well. Normandy's Landing Beaches is also a big seller for us. So this one starts and ends in Paris, but you're going to cruise on the Seine here, and then up from Cadovac, we take you over to Normandy's Landing Beaches to see the landing site and visit the D-Day Cemetery and all that stuff. So this is an awesome itinerary if you haven't done it. It's one of our most popular, and you have a whole day out there at the Normandy Landing Beaches. And then this is the next one that comes in as uh, rounding out top four, again, the Danube. So this one starts in Prague for two nights, and then you come down the Danube seven-night cruise and end in Budapest. This is a new one in 2019, the German Grandeur. So this is a really cool itinerary, guys. I love this one. So I've been to Germany like six times now. So I love this one because it starts in Munich. And you know why I love it because it starts in Munich? Because it goes to Oberammergau and Neuschweinstein. Oh. That's new for us. So Oberammergau is an awesome village in the mountains there in Germany, down in the Bavaria area. Uh, you may know about the Passion Play that happens every 10 years where they reenact the crucifixion of Christ. Oberammergau is known for that. But even just visiting Oberammergau on a non-Passion Play here, it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, city. I stayed there for a couple nights on my honeymoon. It's just a great place to visit. So we go to Oberammergau, but let me talk about with Neuschwanstein. Neuschwanstein is one of my favorite places in the world, bar none. You know what's there? The crazy Ludwig's castle. castle. So you've got this beautiful castle that sits up on a hill. You can uh, take a coach up or a horse ride up and um, see the castle. You get to go into the castle. And it's just, it's beautiful. It's magical. It's splendid. And it is where Disney got their um, idea for their castle. It was from Yushua side. So that's why I love this itinerary so much. But then, of course, you get to cruise a little on the Danube and do the Main Danube Canal, where you go through a crazy number of locks, which is actually really cool to see. And then you do the Rhine down to Basel. So this is new for 2019. All right. And this one, if you're looking for an all, I'm going to go over there and get most of the river inclusive experience. This is it. The uh, Chance of Europe. It's a 15-night cruise, and you can um, extend it to 18 days with night stays on either end. But it starts in Basel, and here you get the Rhine, you get the Mine, the Mine Danube Canal, the Dan, and then the Danube all the way down to Budapest. So this is a long one, but it's really you see a good bit of Central Europe on this one. So if you're looking for a longer experience, this is a good one to keep in mind. All right, so this is a shot of our cabin. This is called a panorama suite, and we have suite ships. So in Europe, we have 15 suite ships. 80% of the cabins on the suite ships are these panorama suites. So the bed, that's Avalon's claim to fame, is our bed faces the view. So you're on your bed or your sitting area here. There's a little couch over here in your 200 square feet. It's really a lot of room. And you're on your bed reading a book, looking outside, and you're just looking at the splendid scenery. So it's really an awesome room. I just, they're so beautiful. Now this gives you another view of it at our open air balcony. So Avalon's answer to the balcony question is this. It's called our open air balcony. All of our panorama suites have them. And this is a wall of glass. Now this guy opens to about here. So you can see she's standing at her open air balcony with her coffee after a shower. Because <laughs> we all do that, right? And she's enjoying the open air balcony. So this way we keep that space inside your cabin rather than taking away space from the cabin to give you an outside balcony. That's Avalon's answer to the balcony, is the open air balcony. So this guy opens up to here. We think our open air balcony concept is super special, but what do other people say? So Jean Sloan from USA Today says when the windows are open wide, passengers in the seating area feel like they are on a balcony. And then we have Lynn and Peter from Cruise Critic who say the Avalon open air balcony is something we would insist on 
in any future cruises, it affords more room in the cabin and we were able to have the huge sliding door open most days. Alright, so this is a layout of the panorama suite. So you've got your bathroom here, we angled a wall which allowed us to give you a bigger bathroom and put the bed facing the view. But of course, you know what they say, a picture, or in this case, a video, is worth a thousand words. So, <laughs> let's see if this video will go. Huh? So I'll give you just a tip 
skip on what the three are. So classic is our first. This is your classic traditional sightseeing. Some of you may have done Globus, your traditional local host um, with, uh, you know, you're with a local host, you're doing like a walking tour, say in Cologne. You go and you see the Cologne Cathedral and you get to hear about the destination and the, you know, the culture there and all about that port. So the next one is Discovery, which is more engaging experiences for people like me, who had already been to Cologne five times, and I was there for a sixth time. I took our Discovery excursion, and I actually did something I hadn't done yet, which was the Chocolate Museum. I hadn't been there yet. So this Discovery option gives you things you might not think to do, or would not have thought of before, and gives you another option for, like me, if you've been to Cologne six times. And then there's an active option. For people who do want to be a little more active, there's uh, biking along the rivers, uh, hiking, and uh, you know they'll go out for early morning jobs, stuff like that. So you don't have to be a road warrior who's just really active to do these excursions. Uh, you know, they are active, but they, they, you know, take a good pace, they make stops, and a lot of people go and enjoy the active, you know, it might take a couple hours to get you down the Danube, but it's really a beautiful experience, and that's where the beauty is, is in seeing that scenery. All right, so we talked about what inclusives there are with Avalon, but we really do like to put a lot of thought into what we're giving you when you book our cruises. So there are a lot of things included, but we do have the soundproofing in every stateroom, so really you can't hear what's going on in the cabins next to you. It really helps with noise from the hallway. Uh, we also have breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day, which we'll talk about. Uh, bottled water daily. Has anybody ever been on a vacation like I was in April in Peru and you can't even brush your teeth with the tap water so you're going, where am I going to buy your next bottle of water? You don't have to worry about that on Avalon. You get all the bottled water you want all day long. So you get uh, bottled water in your room, but then also when you're leaving on an excursion, they put bottles out and if you want to grab three of them because you like to stay hydrated, you like to stay hydrated, so you can grab three bottles on your way out, and you know you don't have that's one less thing to worry about while you're on vacation. And we also have um, lots of Tom Bath products. We have cruise directors that have been in the business for years and years and years. Local guides who come from the local cities, so they really know their stuff and their ports. And we also have bikes and helmets, which have become so popular. People just check out a bike and go on a ride down the Danube, and they're on their way. So we've got a lot of stuff for you guys on our ships. But also, we believe, you know, happiness is in the little things. So this may sound funny again, I'm going back to the bathroom. But we have his and her towels in the bathroom, which, you know, is really cool, right? Like when me and my coworker went together in August. I took the tan towels, she took the white towels, and I knew I was using my towel, and she knew she was using hers. It's these little attention to detail that actually come across, you know, it's really cool. I mean, it's nice to know that you've just got these things waiting for you, right? Like the robe, the slippers, the his and her towels. Lassitong bath products we mentioned. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Lassitong. I am a huge fan of their Immortal eye cream. Uh, they're French products that are definitely luxury products. Uh, we do La Baza coffee, so one of everybody's favorite things on their Avalon ship is their coffee machine. So you have specialty coffees all day long, as many as you want. Uh, I love in our rooms, so we have a choice of making the beds harder or softer, so you can pick how you know your bed feels. So at night, if you like a firmer bed, we can do that. If you like a pillow soft bed, we can do that. We can adjust that for you when you get on the ship, which again, a good night's sleep after a long day is huge. And there's a fitness center if you need to get up and kind of get your juices flowing in the morning. You have the option to do that on our uh, equipment there. So our lounges are phenomenal. We, again, only have up to 166 passengers on our ships. We have two sizes of ships. There is a smaller one at 126. So you're going to have 126 or 166. That's it. Some of our competitors go up to 190. So imagine that many more people in this space, right? So even at just 166 in our main lounge, which this is a picture of here, Everybody has a place to sit for court talks and for any entertainment we bring on board. So it's really a great space to hang out. There's plenty of room for everybody. This space I love as well. 
This is out at the front of the ship on the other side of the main lounge. It's outside, but it's covered. So you have some shade, but you can sit outside and see what's happening at the front of the ship and feel the breeze as you're sailing. So this is one of my favorite spots. But this is my favorite spot on the ship. This is the club lounge. So this is at the back of the, back of the boat, as it were. So this is our club lounge. This is where you'll find a coffee station. There's also a coffee station in the main lounge. But back here, you're going to have fresh pastries, cookies, fruit, teas. So you can come back here and make yourself a mocha and sit with your book or play cards with some friends that you're sailing with. And you have some space back here all to yourself. I don't know if there's any smokers in the room, but if there are, this is the smoking section right out here outside the club lounge. Just in case. You never know. All right, so now let's talk about our food. So uh, with us, you do have breakfast every morning, and there are a lot of choices. So there's an early riser breakfast, there's a late riser breakfast, and then there's the full buffet setting for breakfast. We do serve sparkling wine if you take mimosas at breakfast, you have that option. We have uh, lunch where regional wine and beer is included. And again, we have two choices. We have a light lunch if you'd rather light fare. In the main lounge, you can take a light lunch. Or in the um, main dining room, you can take a buffet lunch where there's a lot of different choices. And then dinner as well, same thing. Four course meal, main dining room, regional wines. I call the magic glass. So the magic glass comes out at dinner. I swear, you look at that wine glass and it was empty. You turn your head to talk to somebody and you turn your head back and it's magically full again. I don't know how they do it, but that's it. So we coined it the magic glass because that thing keeps filling up. Every, and you don't even know how it got the wine got there. I mean, it's, so they're really good about that at dinner. We joke about it, but you, you know, regional wines and beers with dinner, four course meals. And then again, if you prefer light fare on some nights, it's not every night, but on some nights they do a light fare dinner in the lounge if you just rather get something quick and go to bed because you're tired. About two years ago, we partnered with these two cuties here, the Rank Brothers. They're up and coming culinary stars in Vienna. They specialize in vegetarian food, but we partnered with them for healthy options. We came up with Avalon Fresh, and you'll see these, their menu items peppered through the, the whole menu while you're on your cruise. And they really try to have healthy choices, but that are delicious. So I will let them explain their concept to you. Our philosophy, taste is always number one. I would never cook the dish just because it's healthy. I'm a chef. Taste comes first, and everything else is like a plus. Hi, I'm Diego Rank. My name is Carl Rank. Together we own the restaurant Rank and the new hospital directly in the heart of here. We decided to work with Avalon because we think that they are the only one who can really fit with us uh, in this partnership. Avalon Fresh is an exciting collection of wholesome menu items, so delicious you won't believe they're healthy. This is where it all starts. Local, fresh, healthy ingredients. We were raised in the, one of the first vegetarian restaurants in Austria. Our parents used to be the first star vegetarian chefs and the only ones who could in like 30 years. And then when we became like 19, 20 years old, we both had jobs and they were nice, but then we realized that this is our passion and we wanted to work in our passion. You know, there's some sort of magic in sharing a table, sharing a meal, and we want to show the people how magic can be together. The reason why I love the French is so important to me is that I can actually bring what we try to do in a restaurant, bringing fun and tasty food together, healthy food, that we can now really provide that visitors cruising on the that one will be the best, the best chips, the best, the worst rooms, really, really friendly service, and also the food. Food is actually the most important thing on a vacation because that's what we remember. And it was just amazing for us that that one really gave us the chance to bring in our recipes. When we created the Gulag concept for Avalon Fresh, 
one of the major topics was regional producers. It's really important if you want to show local cuisine that you also support local producers. It's our goal to bring the landscape to see how does the new Russian buy on the plate. So many reasons to eat that were fresh, but the most important reason, of course, is fresh. Second, our recipe. We personally took care that we will be amazed. And you can experience uh, local cuisine in a way you never tried before. We really, really like the Avalon philosophy. The customer comes first. The unique view starts with your bed and ends with a beautiful menu. And that's the reason why Avalon Fresh and Grand Brothers goes together so well. It's also our philosophy, the customer comes first. Avalon Fresh is a sort of lifestyle. It's a new way to enjoy your holiday. That means I will be fresh. It's not only about food, it's about activity, it's about lifestyle. And that's a good concept. I think you. They're just so cute. So I'm going to breeze through the rest of these slides because I think I am about out of time and I want to be fair to my partners at the back of the room who want to speak to you as well. So we have special interest cruises. So you can travel with like-minded travelers, wine appreciation, garden and nature, beer tasting, Jewish heritage, festive time. We have one golf cruise and history cruises. Active discovery. We have three itineraries, Rhine, Danube, Rhone, that focus on more active and discovery excursions and less on classic. So on these, you're going to have a lot more options. I was on the Rhine Active Discovery when I mentioned to you there was a morning where I had five excursions. It was on the Rhine Active Discovery. So we do have those three itineraries. These itineraries work great for multi-gen if you want to go with your family. And skip gen. Does everybody know what skip gen is? Skip gen is when your grandparents take your grandkids. So those, you see a lot of skip gen uh, couples and you know groups on these Active Discovery. New for next year, on every ship, we're going to have an adventure center where you can check out bikes, helmets, walking sticks, maps, that sort of thing, Fitbits. There will be an Avalon Adventure host in addition to the cruise director to help you with checking out all those things and telling you where the trails are. And an Avalon Go app that you can download before you go. And when you get there, it will give you suggestions on restaurants and things to do in different ports. All right, so we do more than Europe, because after all of you cruise all the Europe rivers on Avalon, you want something else to do, right? So we do the Mekong, Vietnam, and Cambodia. Here's a look at that itinerary. Ho Chi Minh City, seven night cruise, and ending in Siem Reap. Here's a look at the ship, the Avalon Siem Reap. There's 36 passengers on this guy, 245 square feet cabins. This is a look at the cabin. Beautiful, isn't it? Nice. 245 square feet, and these have the open air balcony just like on our Europe ships. New for next year is India. We will be sailing the Ganges. This is the ship that we're using. It's not an Avalon ship, but we are chartering the Ganges Voyager. This is the itinerary. So you get the main cities up here, Delhi, Agra, Jaipur, and then you fly down to Kolkata and do a six night cruise. Some really cool uh, highlights, sunrise, sunset visit to Taj Mahal, which I think everybody wants to do when they go to India, right? This is what one of the rooms looks like. Isn't that beautiful? Sign me up. We do the Galapagos Islands. We have quite a few different options there. And Peru, the Amazon, which I did in April. Flora, fauna, wildlife, most beautiful night sky you've ever seen in your life. This is what you want to do. We do have some promotions right now, which you can talk to your travel agents at Roseboro. Uh, we have uh, fly free from select cities on select sailings to Europe and the Mekong. Uh, so you can talk to your travel agents at Roseboro about that, and they'll let you know all the details. Thank you. I hope you'll join us.
lesson for the next month. We're going to go on and do a Royal Caribbean talk now about cruising. And I want to know, I'm very interested, how many of you have ever been on a Royal Caribbean ship? Very good, very good. Now well, you have a fan base. Yes. So without further ado, I have Mel here from Royal Caribbean to tell you all of the wonderful things that Royal Caribbean has to offer you. All right. Well, welcome. Thank you for letting me speak to you tonight. There's a lot of things going on for Royal Caribbean. We are building, building new ships, more new ships. We are expanding our destinations. We are Royal Caribbean, like if you see under there, international. We have a big, um, a lot of ships in Asia. We're very big in Australia. We're very big in Europe. We're, of course, big in the Caribbean. Now, a lot of people see Royal Caribbean, oh, I want to do um, Alaska, but you have Caribbean. We are in Alaska. In fact, one of the things I want to do is tell you about something that's kind of special. We have a ship that's in Asia. The ship will then do Australia. And from Australia, they'll go to Hawaii. From Hawaii to Seattle, Seattle to Alaska. So if you want to do something really, really different, and you have the time, because it's 20 plus days sailing from Australia to Seattle, it's a great one. You'll see the South Pacific Islands, you get to Hawaii, you get to Seattle, and if you really want to do it up, add Alaska to it. So that you have the islands and then the ice. <laughs> it's something that's really, really different. And I, I like to talk to people about that. We also have a new ship coming out next year. It's called the Spectrum of the Seas. Same kind of idea. Many people have done the same cruises. You know, I've been to this place, I've been to that place. How about going to places you've never been? How about going out of Barcelona to Singapore? It's a global odyssey, something completely different. I'm not going to be talking about that because they didn't give me a lot of time, so I will talk a little bit about the Caribbean because we have some things happening there. First of all, how many of you have been on Oasis or Oasis class ships? Aren't they fantastic? They are the biggest ships out there. Um, I know people say that you know, it's really big and too many passengers, but the way that we do it is fantastic. It is not decks that you have on board the ship. It is neighborhoods. We have Central Park. And I'm going to show you all this. We have Central Park. We have Boardwalk. And some of you wonder, well, what if I bring my, we call it skip gems? <laughs> yes. What if I bring my grandkids? What if I bring the kids? Is there going to be something there to do? It is great. I'm going to show you this right now because talking about it is better when you see it. This is the back of the ship. Um, on the Oasis class, this happens to be the Symphony, which is the newest of the Oasis class ships. We have all these great things for kids, adults, anybody who wants to try to do it. This is a 10-story dry slide. Now. Um, I did it, it's wonderful. I thought it would be faster, it's not as fast as I thought it would be. My wife is claustrophobic, did not want to do it, got her to the edge, kind of pushed her. <laughs> so yes, we're still married. <laughs> but it is great, you have all these options. In the back here is called the Aqua Theater. We have high diving performances from way up here into this very small pool. It is amazing what we are doing, the kind of technology that we have to do these, um, these new ships. So I told you it's neighborhoods. We don't do it by um, decks. We have the boardwalk. So if you have kids and, and families, they kind of gravitate to the boardwalk. We have a carousel there, and that's what you see up there. We have all kinds of special things for families to do. Um, then we have the Royal Promenade. It is a big giant street in the middle of the ship. A lot of shopping, a lot of uh, dining there. We have the pool and sports zone. 
entertainment place, if you like gambling, if you like the disco, if you like jazz clubs. You know, one of the great things, I started this more than almost 30 years ago with cruising. And we started with a 5,000 ton ship. And it was great, everybody knew everybody, and it was wonderful. However, the gym was in a stateroom, you know, it's in a cabin. Um, you had one or two lounges. Now you have all of these activities. You have a jazz club. If you don't like the regular shows, go to the jazz club. If you don't like that, go. We have an ice skating show. You don't have to ice skate, you can just come see the show. We have first run plays, we have Grease, we have Mamma Mia, the full play, not just vignettes of it. So what we've done with cruising, back from napkin folding and bingo, to all these new things that you can do. So it's pretty wonderful. So um, on Symphony, we have Hairspray, Aqua Theater shows, we have another show called Hero, Studio B Ice Show, uh, Ice Skating Show, Parades, we have so much happening on board the ship that many people come back again and again just because they miss some of these other activities. So it's a great way to um, enjoy the ship and the accommodations are a little bit different than um, what you may see on some of the other ships. In fact, we have some interior, um, which means an inside cabin with a giant balcony looking TV screen. It is a TV screen. Um, it shows a camera outside, so it looks like you have an actual balcony. And I can tell you that if you drink too much and you go in your room, I'll try to open it. It will not open. So we have all these great. Um, we have balconies that overlook boardwalk, so they're facing inside. And a lot of people say, "Well, no. Why do you have uh, a balcony that faces inside?" Well. If you've been, if you've had an ocean view balcony, can you tell me what you've seen at night? Absolutely nothing. It's pitch light. And during the day while you're sailing, pretty much if you see a, a dolphin or two, you're lucky. It's usually just blue and maybe another ship way out there. So if you have something to look at, if you're a people watcher or you want to see activities, that's the way to go, a balcony that faces um, Boardwalk or Central Park. And we're also giving some extra amenities if you do do those. Boardwalk usually is for families, so we'll get some family amenities. Central Park is usually more um, older adults because they like the tranquility and the beauty because you're looking at full-grown trees, uh, all kinds of flora and fauna there, so you'll really, really enjoy it. And then, we have the suites. Now we uh, separate this, and I'll show you in a second, into three different classes of suites. If you take the biggest suites that we have, which are the Royal Loft, we have um, two-story suites, and we also have this one that's really special if you're growing kids or grandkids. It's called the Ultimate Family Suite. It has an 80-inch screen TV, has a um, uh, foosball table, air hockey, and it has a giant slide from upstairs to downstairs for the kids to slide through. So it's something, if they're in the room, they're not bothering you, they're doing all these other activities. So it's a lot of fun for them. I'm in and this is, this is what it looks like. So it's, yeah, sleeps up to eight. So um, you have all these things, and you have a 4K Ultra HD TV. What it means to me, I don't know. The kids know 4K is great, and you can play your games and everything on there. It's different um, viewing. So so much. In fact, um, this is one of the hottest suites that we're selling on the Symphony for families. And so we're going to also start putting that on on the ships. Symphony of the Seas is the ultimate family ship, and the ultimate family suite, which there's only one in the world, is here on Symphony of the Seas. And it really is this perfect place for the family vacation. We've been thinking about something like this for a while, and really it's about what families want, what are they looking for? And we knew we had to do something that just made the ultimate family statement. 
you know, the name says it all. A little bit finally sleep, a slide, a movie theater, all the gaming accessories, PlayStations, Xboxes. The suite is composed of two bedrooms, and upstairs you've got a parent's room, and it has a little secret door to the kids' room. The kids' room is awesome, and there's a slide. So you've got the slide that you can slide down, and then they can climb right up and run up there. We have a balcony which is 250 square feet, which has its own jacuzzi. It's all lucky climber, sort of a climbing wall for, for, for kids. It has gaming tables up there, and uh, you always see the sports deck and the whole activities on top of it. There's really something for everyone, and for everyone to do together. I think the level wall is one, that you have the whole wall to play with, and you can build throughout the week. We also have a magnet wall enables you to also tell a story and you can put as many pieces and parts and stories and design on it. So it's all those elements that enable you to have fun together. It's about connecting with your family and that's what makes it so special. So technology has come a long, long way, especially in the rooms. Now, um, I was talking about the suites earlier. We do have programs on the Oasis class, the big ships. If you take a star, which is the biggest suites we have, pretty much everything is included. If you have Wi-Fi, um, drink package, um, specialty restaurants, all that is included. And that's for the big one. You also get a genie, which is a bubble. So that's for the star class. Sky class has a lot of amenities. And C is for our junior suite, so they get some up, um, dinner at the suites, uh, kitchen, uh, luxury pillow top mattress, and luxury bathroom amenities. Now, we, we call Royal Amplified, meaning that every time we build new ships, people say, well, I don't want to go on the old ship, I want to go on the new ship. So in order to keep the interest on the older ships, we amplify them meaning that we completely redo them. So, for example, this year we had the Independence and Mariner. How many of you remember Mariner? Mariner used to be here in Port Canaveral, and um, everybody loved the Mariner. We brought it to some other place, and we brought in the Freedom, and now we have the Oasis that's there, and we're changing that to the Harmony. So, the Mariner was completely redone, and that's the Mariner on that um, banner there. We added all kinds of things onto it. So every year, we're taking ship and completely redoing it, putting in new staterooms, new restaurants, everything. So we're spending millions upon millions of dollars doing that, just to make sure when you go on there, you have a great time, and the newest that we can offer, especially in technology. And sure, Caribbean, um, well, this is the Marin. So that will be doing three and four nights. Now, remember, this used to do a seven night. Now we're bringing this big, beautiful ship that has an ice skating rink and everything else to the short market. So we're going to have a lot of fun with that. And um, what's really fun, we have a lot of family activities, laser tags. Now, how many of you have ever been to an escape room? Okay, a couple of you. Let me tell you, escape room is a puzzle that you have to use the whole group to get out of the room. You have to figure out all these little clues that they give you. Now, my one of my friends went in there with engineers. She said, I'm going to get out of this faster than anybody else. So she went in there with engineers and never came out. <laughs> She's still in there. <laughs> but um, she went in again with kids and got out. In a heartbeat. So if you ever do this, bring some kids with you. It's a great, great way to have some some fun and entertainment. We have a lot of new restaurants. Playmakers is brand new. It's a sports bar on board the ship. We had sports bars before, but they were integrated with other things. Now there's a dedicated sports bar. So if you're into football, soccer, baseball, we'll have all of them there. And we also have an area where they'll have um, games for kids and stuff. So you can bring the whole family of people who are interested in sports. We'll go there in the gaming room, go over there to the other side. We also have Zumi, which is our Asian fair. Um, this is right now the Mariners in Miami. It's coming to Port Canaveral in May. To get through this because we have um, nine ships that will be uh, doing short 
um, sailings from Miami, from Tampa, from Fort Lauderdale, as well as Port Canaveral, and Texas, Galveston. Now, one of the big things we are really, really excited about, and I don't want to run out of time with this, um, is called Coco Cay, a perfect day at Coco Cay. <coughs> Some of you have been to our private island. We have two private islands, and hopefully we'll be getting more in the future. But Coco Cay has always been a, a special place. It's in the Bahamas, and it's always been pretty nice. One of the problems we had with Coco Cay is that the ship does not port there. We have to go <coughs> on a tender to get to the island. Well, we're building a port now. So it should be, I think it's completed now as we speak. And by May, we're going to have all of this. What all of this is, the tallest water slide in North America will be in Coco Cay. We're going to have, um, let me show you. We're going to have um, the water park, beach clubs. Uh, we're going to have a fresh water pool there. We're going to have a wave pool. We're going to have zip line. We're going to have all kinds of things at this island, and this is somewhat what it will look like. It will be completed thoroughly in May, but we're doing it in sections, so some parts will be finished uh, next week, other parts will be finished by December. So by the end of um, in May 2019, we're going to have all this together for you. So we're going to have hot air balloon. We're going to have all these special things, the wave pool, I'm sure a lot of people are going to have so much fun, but we'll have something for the kids uh, to play in. Some of them have charges, some of them are free. We'll have uh, these cabanas over the water. So a lot of special places if you want to get away on this island. So this is kind of giving you a big overview. This will be the pier. All of our ships can now come in no matter what size they are. Because before, these big ships could not get near it, but now we built it so that all of our ships can come in. So we are really, really excited. Just give you more of the lagoon area. And this is for the kids, Splash Away Bay. So if the grandkids are coming, we bring them over here. They also have a ship that they can play on. And of course, the zip line is going to be big. We have Lava D is another one of our areas that also has a lot of this, but not as not as um, big as this. We'll have a, a floating bar, so if you want to go out and really cool out and, and get a drink by your swimming, you have that. And all these ships will be coming to um, stopping in Coco Cay. So some are from the Northeast. If you're in New York, New Jersey, that's Anthem and Venture. In Baltimore, it's Grandeur. And all these others are um, in Florida. And we also have one coming from Transatlantic. And if you really want to try a different cruise, do one of the, one of the repositioning cruises. Usually, it's less expensive than our regular cruises. You're stopping at different areas, and the pricing really, I mean, I've seen it as low as like $500 for like 14 nights. Not saying, don't say Mel said it was 500 but I've seen it as low as that. So there's a lot of specials there. Let me just get past this. And I just want to let you know, one of the things that makes Royal Caribbean really great is the feedback and the comments that we get. And because of all the different feedback and all the things that we um, receive, we're doing something special. I know a lot of times when we get to the port, there's a lot of people there. And a lot of lines that you have to navigate through. But we're changing a lot of that. We're having mobile check-in. Um, if you have a smartphone, you would take your own selfie, uh, put in your, your passport, and go into the mobile line. I don't know if you've ever been to one of the airports internationally and you see some of that, you know, global check-in over here and all the rest of you smart over right here. So now we're doing that same thing. We're, we're trying to find ways to use technology to really speed up the process. So we built a brand new terminal in Miami. How many of you have been to Miami? Just a couple of you. Just to let you know, if you go to Miami port, there is now a tunnel that goes from 95 right to the fort. You no longer have to go through the city. Before, you had to go through the city, and then people are washing your windows, and you're missing the turn, and 
A lot of people did not like uh, Miami. Now you have the tunnel go straight there, and we have this big, beautiful um, new terminal that we have all the state of the art equipment. And you don't know, be doing mobile check-in. You don't know, be doing, and you don't have to. I'm just saying this is a quicker way. You'll get on the ship in about 10 minutes rather than going through the regular lines. So a lot of new technologies coming out, a lot of things for the families. We are very, very family oriented. And I always get the question, no, how do I avoid kids? I love my grandkids, but don't always want to travel with other people's kids. <laughs> so, the way that you do it is that um, just understand that our biggest times are in the summer and holidays. So anytime a holiday or summer rolls around, that's when we're going to have the most kids on board. So if you avoid that, you have nothing but adults there. And if you do happen to go during those dates, most of our ships have what we call solariums. A solarium is a, a pool area where you can get away from all the kids. It's for adults only. And no kid really wants to be there, all us adults reading books and stuff. So it's a great getaway on board most of our ships. And we are also going to Cuba. We have two ships going to Cuba, one from Tampa, one from Miami. We also are doing more than one port in Cuba. We have uh, three ports uh, in Cuba. So a lot of different things that we're doing in the Caribbean. So I hope you have the opportunity to join us. With that, I want to really, really thank you. Thank you. So if you get with Roseboro, you get that 60% off. And also, if you bring a third or fourth, meaning if you bring kids, there's four of you in a, a stateroom, we'll do 35% off that rate. And that's just for this month, ends the end of this month. Next month, we'll come up with something else. So please talk to Roseboro. They, they are wonderful. They'll do a great job for you. We also have a lot of other little promotions, and Roseboro does groups with us. So ask them about the groups that they have with us, and maybe you can join one of the groups. We do a lot of amenities there as well. Uh, Victory Cruise Line is what Bruce represents. Oh, that was quick. And um, well, how many of you have traveled with Victory Cruises before? Yay! And at the end of this presentation, I'm pretty sure I would, we would love to hear what you have to say as well about that. Um, but, for now, take it away, Bruce, since you set up that quickly. That was easy. That so, was good evening. How are we? Good. 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 So, Amanda's letting me go last simply because she knows she knows how I give presentations. It's going to take about four hours. Sit back for lunch. I'm just kidding. We'll have, we'll have you out of here by the 10 o'clock news. Easy. And actually, the folks who went with us, we had two folks in the back of the room that did raise their hand that recently sailed with us. They did the Great Lakes. Kiss my parents. No, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> but they did go with us recently. They just got back about a month ago, maybe. You had a wonderful, two months ago, you had a wonderful trip. We appreciate that. Nice to hear. So, uh, you know, great folks to talk to afterwards if you want to get their opinion on, on the Victory Cruise experience, what it was like, where they went. They did the Great Lakes with us. But we'll, today we'll talk about uh, the different itineraries that we as a company actually offer, but it's nice to have folks that actually sell with us. It's not just not just me saying how great we are, but actually folks in your own audience that traveled with us recently and really enjoyed it. So it's nice. You know, I think what, what's really interesting today is you've got you've had really three very different types of cruise experiences that you've learned about. Certainly what you're what you're gonna see here in a couple of minutes, we think fits in that category. We began with European river cruising, and I can tell you, if you've never done a European river cruise, I saw half of the hands go up. For the other half of the audience, and I'm not here to promote or talk about European river cruising, I'm just here to say, if you've never done one, do it. It's fabulous, the rivers are gorgeous, the ships are fantastic, Avalon's a great product. If you've never done an ocean-going ship, I think everyone in this audience, I saw every hand go up on an ocean-going ship, and you should, right? Cruising is just wonderful. You know, I think what's interesting, and I've done, just like Mel, I've been in the industry 35 years. I mean, I've kind of grown up in the, in the travel and cruise industry. Today, what's interesting, and you really saw it with, with Royal Caribbean, 
The ships, I think, to me, have become their own destination, right? Yeah. Think about it. The ships have gotten so big. Why? To offer all these great services and features on board ship that you would have never seen 30 years ago. So even cruising is very different. What we're about to talk about now is kind of go step back another step, right? We're going to talk about kind of the other side of that cruising coin. Because we were, we were discussing big ship cruising, which is two and three and four and five thousand people. We're going to look at the other side of that cruising point, which is Victory Cruise Line. Now we're getting back into 200 passengers. 200. Who are probably the size of the Oasis Tender. Right? <laughs> they could just drop our ship off the side and use it as a tender. 200 people. So this is, this is kind of where we're at. So I think what's kind of interesting about Victory and, and chatting with these folks that went with us, perfect candidates for victory. Because what we see with our product is, who are our passengers? Who are the folks that are generally sailing with us? That's the folks in this audience today, right? It's people that have cruised. You've been on big ships. You loved it. You enjoyed it. You've done the Caribbean. You've been to Alaska. You've been to Hawaii. You've maybe done Asia even. You've been to Australia, New Zealand. You've seen lots of the world. On a variety of ships. You're looking for something new, something different, and I think very often, interestingly enough, small ship cruising ends up kind of coming full, full circle back into being something that's really of interest to a lot of experienced cruisers. This may not be something a first time cruiser would pick, because typically you'd pick big ships and do the Caribbean and have lots of fun and slides and skating rinks. That's where it all starts. But very often, the experienced travelers, folks that have done many cruises, they've been to lots of places, they eventually kind of look at products like us as their next step because they like going back and being on board a small ship with a few people, going places they haven't been. That's where we step in. So today's presentation, I'm going to kind of walk you through some of the ship, kind of give you an idea of what the ships are about. We have two vessels. They're, they're identical, so if you're on one, you're on the other. So we have two vessels, they both carry 200 people, and uh, basically what you're about to see is with two ships we do four programs. So in the summertime, in the summertime, we have our two ships up north, and one ship basically does the Great Lakes, right, which is, and for us, that means all five Great Lakes, so we actually sail the entire Great Lakes system. And that's something unusual, because funny enough, there aren't really that many other cruise lines that even do what we do. So we sail the entire Great Lake system, all five lakes. <clears throat> the other ship is doing something just as beautiful but very different, which is the St. Lawrence Seaway. That's gorgeous, I can tell you, because it's the St. Lawrence Seaway, the Saguenay Fjords, which is kind of like our version of the Norwegian Fjords. It's beautiful. Quebec, Montreal, I'll never forget this story. 1981, I'm 19 years old, brand new in the cruise industry, my very first cruise with the cruise line I was with, we sailed the St. Lawrence Seaway. We're in Quebec. I'm a 19-year-old kid. I've never been anywhere. I didn't know a ship from Shinola. Think about that. <laughs> I didn't know anything about anything. I'm 19 years old. I'm in Quebec. And what are they speaking? French? Or in Quebec? A lot of French, right? They don't speak much English in Quebec. They speak French. So here I am, 19 years old. I just finished my shore excursion. I get on the wrong bus. And all, I, all I'm picturing is, I'm sitting on this bus where everyone speaks French, and this bus is headed me in the wrong direction of my little ship parked downtown. I'll never forget that. Thank God I made it back, and I'm here to talk to you today. Otherwise, I'd still be roaming around Quebec trying to figure out how to get to that ship. But the moral of that story was, the St. Lawrence Seaway, which is one of the programs that we do, is really gorgeous because it's Quebec, Montreal, Toronto, Boston, Halifax, Nova Scotia, beautiful ports, right? Uh, Niagara Falls, these are wonderful itineraries. So in the summertime, it's the Great Lakes in Canada and New England. In the wintertime, we're going to bring one of the ships into Miami. Talking about Miami. We're going to bring one of the ships into Miami, and what she's going to do in, in the wintertime, which will start in January, and she's going to alternate between Cuba, which we'll talk about in a couple of minutes, and Mexico. So Cuba and Mexico, she's going to kind of go back and forth and offer those two problems. So anyway, so here's kind of where we're at. Now. We're looking at these two ships, and they both carry 200 people. 
So I kind of think when you're kind of looking at us, what you're seeing is with our product is it's what we call all inclusive, and to us that means that all of our like you like you would have experienced, all of our shore excursions are included. So you're not buying shore excursions. And what we're going to see in a couple of minutes, really interestingly enough, is the shore excursions that we create as a company, and I think you'd agree, are world class. And they're very unusual. They are not shore excursions that you would find or buy or do with anyone else or any or any other company, right? So what you're about to experience with us as we go ashore in these various ports is something we've created just for our 200 passengers. So the shore excursions are all included and then all of the open bars included. And I would really kind of describe our passengers. These two words I think are good buzzwords. Immersive, that's become a big buzzword in the industry. Immersive means that our folks are going with us because they're really looking forward to this small ship, very intimate, very personal experience, and they're looking forward to really learning more about where they're going, right? They're not just going to places where they get off and go to beaches and go snorkeling and see the stingrays. And, you know, they're really going to learn about the culture, the people, the history, the ports of call, places that we're going to take them. So we really describe those folks as being kind of immersive. They're looking forward to where they're headed and what they're going to see and what they're going to learn about those countries and cities and ports. And very curious because our, our travelers, our folks are wanting to know more about these places. So these are really two buzzwords that we've really kind of nailed down as being our types of passenger folks that would really enjoy traveling with us. We're going to use U.S. based uh, experts while we're on board ship, while we're in local ports, and we'll have our local guides that will come aboard and travel with us while we're in these local ports. So we have our, our experts on board ship, our experts in port. Uh, but what you're finding is with small ships like this, this is a very destination driven product, right? Because it's only 200 passengers, there's no skating rinks, there's no, there's no casino. There's not even a big show lounge. We, we actually tend to use our show lounge, which we do have one. We tend to use our show lounge more for these kind of folks, our naturalists, our historians, our guest speakers, our lecturers. They tend to be the folks that are actually using our show lounge because, once again, our passengers are on board ship to learn about where we're headed. Let's learn about these these ports of call. So we're generally using our you know our show lounges and, and meeting rooms for those folks that are on board ship with us. So this is all about the destinations. When you've got a small ship, it's just like European river cruising in the sense that European river cruising, you're really going because of the rivers, the ports, the cities. You want to see Budapest, you want to see Vienna, you want to see Amsterdam. That's why you're on board ship, right? Same with us. You're going to see the the destinations, the ports of call. As mentioned, all the shore excursions, open bars included. We're going to talk about Cuba and Mexico in a couple of minutes. I think our folks in the back, they would agree, the dining and the staff, some of the best in the industry. Fabulous five-star dining, great, great staff, very friendly. And with 200 people, which is only 100 gallons, that's one of the nice features is our staff really does get to know very quickly all of our passengers, their needs, their likes, their wants, what you drink, what your favorite food is. You get a chance to know those people. We have 86 crew and 200 passengers. So the crew passenger ratio is excellent. So that's kind of nice. We're going to do some dining ashore. So just like our folks would have seen when they did the Great Lakes, some of those nights were actually overnights in various ports. We'll go ashore and do, do dining. And uh, <clears throat> while we're ashore, we'll have local entertainers maybe come on board ship and do a little, do a little show for us in the show lounge that we do offer. But once again, this is all about the destination. This is the ports. This is what's kind of driving our folks to go with us. Good picture of the cabins. All of our cabins, you know, are, are have big picture windows like this. They run from 150 square feet to 300, depending on the cabin that you buy. But this is a really, really nice picture of what they look like. They're beautifully decorated and they're very colorful, lots of blues and whites. But I would describe the ship, though. The ship is, to me, very traditional looking. A lot of wood, a lot of brass, a lot of glass. It's very traditional looking, very nice, beautiful little vessels. Two dining rooms, we've got our main dining room, which is all open seating, but then we also have an outdoor dining area, which for breakfast and lunch is, is usually done as a buffet, and then for dinner we tend to use that as a kind of reservation only dining, but it's free, there's no charge for it, but it's a nice outdoor dining area, and it's just a beautiful way to have, a, have an evening dinner. European river cruisers tend to be our kind of clients, those tend to be folks that are really great candidates for us because once again, European river cruising, what they have in common with us is small ships, great destinations, learning more about the places that you're sailing. So we tend to get, you know, folks that are experienced, 
well-traveled, savvy travelers, and those are the folks that go with us. So these are pretty experienced travelers and, and cruisers and vacationers that are generally sailing with us. And they talked about this young man in the back, he talked about uh, the high tea. We do things like high tea on board ship, and our high tea is that uh, we do three of them. One, one is uh, uh, something like you'd say at the Ritz Carlton, uh, one is India, like you'd see in the, the Maharajas would offer, right, with a nice high tea, an Indian high tea, and then the British high tea. So all three are beautiful. They actually wear costumes. They're just really nice, a lot of fun. So we're doing some fun things on board ship, like high tea, like that. And then we're trying to offer a lot of regional specialties. So we're in these different ports of call, whether it's Cuba, Mexico, the Great Lakes, Quebec. We're trying to offer some, you know, regional specialties for dining, as well as all the just typical steaks and potatoes and lobster that you might find as well. To me, this is how I kind of see our product versus the rest of the world. I kind of see sailing with us as more of comparing a bed and breakfast to a Hilton. That doesn't mean that either one's better, but they're very different, right? They're very different experiences. So once again, the folks that are on board ship with us, they're looking more for this bed and breakfast experience. They want to be there with just a few people that they're going to get to know. They want, to, they want the intimacy of a small ship, and they're kind of looking for that experience. The Hilton's going to be big, it's grand, it's beautiful. This is more of the bed and breakfast experience. So it's very intimate, very fun, and uh, but really getting a chance to know your neighbors, get a chance to meet the crew, and uh, get to know everybody on board ship. So some of the programs that we have, we'll begin with just our, our, our kind of, this is our, our Mexico program. This is very unusual. Like I said, I've done this 35 years. In my 35 years, I've never seen an itinerary like this. Because I, I, I had someone from the, from the cruise industry I've sold Mexico, which is Cancun, Casanel, a million times, right? We've all been to those ports a million times. Well, we, we may do the Yucatan, we may do Mexico, but we don't even visit Cancun, Casanel. We don't even go there. Those are not ports of call for us. We're taking our folks to parts of the Yucatan that they've never seen. Never seen, because what you're actually doing is you're sailing from Miami, and it's, a, it's an 11-day, one-way cruise. So you're sailing from Miami to eventually Camp Peachy, Mexico, and then we're flying you back to Miami. Or you can start in Camp Peachy and finish in Miami. But either way, it's an 11-day, one-way trip. But what you're really doing is you're, you're sailing into the Yucatan Peninsula, and you're going to spend about three days at Puerto Morales and actually sit at the pier for the next three days, and each day go out for shore excursions. And then we're going to drive you over to Chichen Itza, stay at night, over, over, in, stay at night in Chichen Itza, and then eventually drive over to Progresso Merida, meet the ship at Progresso Merida, stay there a couple of more days, tied up to the ship, going out each day for shore excursions, and then sailing into Campeche, getting two nights in Campeche, and then we fly it back. So it's a very, very different experience. So for folks that think they've been to Mexico, uh, and you've seen Cancun Cozumel, well, you've seen parts of it. But what you're really seeing here, as you can see, though, this is, this is real Mexico. Now you're getting back into the Mayan history, right? 2,000 years of history, not just big cities that are on the beach with big resorts. This is 2,000 year old Mayan Mexico. So it's really all about the history, the ports, the people, the culture. It's fascinating. We're going to do a day in Key West. <coughs> like I said, this is the pier. This is the pier of Puerto Morales. No one can fit there but us. It's a small pier. This, this is just big enough for our ship. We're going to sit there for the next three days. And like I said, this is your home away from home. You're going to stay on board ship each night, have your dinners on board ship. But each day you're going to go out and actually see ports of call. So we'll take our folks to the nearby ruins of Tulum. Tulum are world class. I mean, they're fabulous. They're beautiful ruins. So we'll go see the walled city. We'll have lunch at a beach nearby. That'll be a lot of fun. We're going to see the nearby uh, uh, city of Ishkaret. Ishkaret is beautiful because there we're going to go see the, the butterfly, butterfly pavilion, the aviary, all the colorful birds, the turtle uh, conservatory. So we're going to go and spend the day at Ishkaret. Ishkaret is one of the UNESCO World Heritage Sites. And we're actually seeing quite a few of those UNESCO sites in Mexico and Cuba that we'll talk about in just a minute. So we're going to go and see Ishkaret that day. A lot of fun that night while we're at Ishkaret. And keep in mind, when you kind of picture Ishkaret, you're saying, hey, where is it? What is it? Right? You're, you're imagining this very small village. Well, it is. But interestingly enough, inside Ishkaret is this massive theater. And we go to the show. It's, of course, included. But it has 300 performers at this big show, which is all included, but you're at Ishkaret in the middle of nowhere in this massive theater seeing this great spectacular show that we take our folks to. So it's really interesting. The next day we're going to go out and see nearby Playa del Carmen. I went there 35 years ago, 
it's nothing like it is today, right? It's finally grown up into a little city with some decent shopping and, and really a magnificent art museum and the Frida Kahlo Museum. It's wonderful. She's a world-class artist, a Mexican artist. This is the place that we're going to take our folks to for lunch. It's a restaurant inside a cave. It's called a Lux. And this is a restaurant inside the cave. This is where we'll have lunch that day. Can you imagine what an amazing day? Nowhere else can you do this. From Port Morales, from the port that day, we'll, we'll go out and visit the nearby city called Valladolid. This is really named one of Mexico's top ten magical cities. It's just a beautiful ancient city. Lots of history. Very authentic. Very authentic. So before getting there, we've learned about Valladolid with our lecturers on board ship. Now that we're there, we have our local guides going with us to tell us all about this beautiful city. So we're going to go see that. We're going to go visit the nearby cenotes. And the cenotes are basically these <clears throat> underground kind of reservoirs that have formed underneath the earth. And they're fantastic. So we're going to see this is one of the most beautiful ones. And we'll have lunch at a nearby cenote. There's actually a restaurant where we can go and have lunch at one of the nearby cenotes just like that. And if you want to go swimming, of course you can. So during those three days, at the end of those three days that we're in Puerto Morales, we then finish up by driving you, so now we're in a motor coach, we're going to drive our passengers from Port Morales inland to Chichen Itza, which is the really famous, really, really famous Mayan ruins, right? So we're going to go to Chichen Itza and stay there overnight. We're giving you a travel bag to go to Chichen Itza with that night and you keep it, you take it home with you. But we're going to stay at the hotel, which is located at Chichen Itza, it's on the ruins ground. So we're going to stay there that night. Just our, we, No one else does this in the entire world. No other ship's ever done this. We do. This is very unusual. So we're going to stay at the hotel that night. We're going to go to the laser, laser light show. They have one of the world, world's best laser light shows. They are at Tulum, at the ruins. So we're, at, or I'm sorry, at Chichen Itza. So we're going to go see the, the laser light show. The next day we'll get up and have a private tour of Chichen Itza before it even opens the doors to the public. We go in first and have a private tour of Chichen Itza. When we finish up, we're going to drive from Chichen Itza. We'll stop in the city of uh, Izamal. Izamal is just gorgeous. It was painted yellow in honor of the Pope's visit back in 1993. They, they painted this entire city yellow. It's gorgeous. We're going to visit the city of Izamal. So we've left Chichen Itza. We're driving. We're on our way to Progreso Merida. On the way, we stop at Izamal. We see that once again, very Mayan, very Spanish. Uh, lots of history. Beautiful city. We're making our way to the city of Progreso Merida, where the ship is waiting for us at the end of the pier. So we're now going to stay in Progreso Merida for a couple of days. We're going to see this area, Progreso Merida, gorgeous. Merida especially, beautiful little town, lots of Mexican history. We'll go to the Mayan, uh, the Mayan Museum there. We're going to go to the Hacienda, where they actually make, uh, they use the Hennigan plants to do two things. Make tequila, right? Make tequila. And then also make rope. When I first saw this picture, I thought, why in the world are they making blonde wigs? They're not blonde wigs, that's rope. So anyway, so they're making rope. So we go to this working hacienda, which is one of the last ones, where they still make this rope from the Hennigan plants. It's kind of amazing. And we meet, we meet uh, uh, Tom Antonio. He's 82 years old. <clears throat> when he finally got too old to actually work there and, and, and continue making the rope from the, from the Hennigan, he had nowhere to go. So they actually gave him a place to live on property. So Don Antonio still lives there today, 82 years old, retired, but he actually has his own place at the Hacienda. So he could stay and we get a chance to meet him. And he speaks Mayan, which is not Mexican or Spanish. So we have translators from Mayan to Spanish to English, just so we can talk to Don Antonio. Amazing, really amazing. For Progresso Merida, we're going to go out one day, we're going to see another ruins, but this is really magnificent because this is a ruins called Mayapan, and Mayapan is really one of, A, it's one of Mexico's largest, and, but it's also one of Mexico's most, you know, least seen, because it's so remote, it's so difficult to get to, it's not a place the average tourist even goes. So we go there because there's just no one else there, but it's a magnificent, magnificent ruins. Dates back to, you know, the, the 12th and 13th centuries. I mean, incredible. So these are really old. 12,000 people would have lived inside Maya Bay. Imagine that, 12,000 people in these ruins. Really incredible, because we always got a picture of the ruins, but you never really associate people living there, right? It's always just stones and temples, and it's old, and 
It's, you know, you never really associate people living there inside. 12,000 people lived inside my head. It's an amazing thing to see. Now look at this podcast. There's one of the temples that we'll see. We're going to visit a city called Nolo. This is just interesting because there we're going to have a, a spiritual encounter. And Nolo is a city where the Dalai Lama back in 1985, when he was in, when he was in Mexico, he was actually drawn there by the Holy Spirit to the city of Nolo because he felt energy coming from this area. He had to eventually figure out, find where this power was coming from. And he ended up in the city of Nolo. So we take our folks to Nolo, and it's fun because we're actually going to do a spiritual cleansing there. We're going to give you the, the, the white serapes you can wear because you have to wear white for that. We're going to give you the serapes that you get a chance to keep. But you're going to be cleansed, spiritually cleansed, by a Mayan shaman. What a day. Where else can you do that, right? Nowhere else in victory. This is very unusual. We're going to wrap up our trip with a couple of days in Campeche. And Campeche, too, is just another beautiful city. Uh, another you know, gorgeous place. We're going to spend two days there. Your hotel is included. Your meals are included. Your day tour is included. Just a gorgeous place. We're staying at the uh, at the gorgeous uh, Hotel Plaza Campeche, which is a beautiful hotel. All your meals, all your restaurants, everything's included. We're actually going to have dinner at uh, each night at uh, two of really Mexico and certainly Campeche's most famous restaurants. And that way you can go and order off the menu anything you want. There's no you know there's no pre-selected foods or off the menu whatever you want. But both five star restaurants. Beautiful. All included. We're going to wrap up Campeche with uh, seeing this big theater. This once again, this is like looking back at uh, you know watching The Godfather or something, right? When I see this picture, it's kind of what I'm reminded of. It's like seeing this big theater back in the 1950s in the van or something. It's a beautiful big theater. We're going to go to the uh, to the folkloric ballet and see that. We're going to, we are going to take our folks to where they make Panama hats. You get to take Panama hats home again. Funny thing about this is in, in the city of Macau. Panama hats were actually not, designed, not created in Panama. They were created for the, Pan, the workers on the Panama Canal. So they were, they were actually built, you know, I won't say built, but they were actually, you know, made these hats in the call, and then they would take those hats and they were used for the workers on the Panama Canal. But we always got to imagine the Panama, Panama hats being built, you know, being made in Panama. They were, they were built in the Canal. And you get to take those home. So it's a lot of fun. We've got some cruises in January, they run through April, so we've got quite a few different sailings that are going to do Mexico. Our Cuba cruise, that's going to be on the, uh, uh, that's a 14 day, so what you're seeing here is those out of Miami, and this is the entire island, right? This is the entire island, because funny enough, there's more to Cuba than just Havana, so there is more to that than just meets the eye. So we, of course, do Havana, but you're also seeing we do the entire island, so it's all four ports of coal. Santa de Cuba, Trinidad, San Diego, San Havana. So we're going to see the entire island, all four ports, stay overnight at each port. So this is a very cultural experience, getting a chance to learn a lot more about the Cuban history. Once again, very immersive. We're going to go to the cemetery and see where, uh, you know, the cemetery for uh, Castro and Jose Marti. Uh, we're going to go to the barracks where the revolution kind of started, so you get a chance to see that. We're going to get a chance to go to a private performance by a dance, dance, dance group called Katumba. So we're gonna have a private showing just for our passengers. So that'll be a lot of fun. <clears throat> have lunch at the nearby fortress, uh, take a guided tour of the cathedral. And this is all from Santa de Cuba. So we're gonna go and spend a couple of days there, overnight in two days, seeing this beautiful city. And uh, having, a, you know, having the private performance, we're gonna visit the city of Trinidad. When I first saw this on the slide, I thought, how did we get to Trinidad? Wait, that's way down in the Eastern Caribbean. Well, there's a city called Trinidad, too, on, on the island of Cuba. So we're going to go and spend a couple of days in Trinidad. And really, what's nice about Trinidad is just a beautiful portion of the country. It's gorgeous. It's up in the mountains. We're going to go to a coffee farm. Uh, we're going to go do some do to a ceramic shop. We'll do, of course, our people-to-people -people interaction, because that's always required. When you're in Cuba, you have to do some people-to-people -people, uh, uh, shore excursions, which we do. But you can see here, just what a beautiful section of the country, right? Very mountainous and green and gorgeous. We're going to spend a couple of days there. Have lunch at Paladires. The Paladires are, are basically people's homes. So in Cuba, one of the big deals has become having lunch at people's homes. So all of our shore excursions each day, all of our lunches each day while we're in Cuba, we actually go to folks' homes and have lunch with them. Really interesting. All included. That's a lot of fun. San Fuegos, we're going to go and visit that city. This is where we're going to go to the farmer's market. Uh, we're, going to, we're going to see another performance. This one will be by the children's group there in San Fuegos. We're going to get a chance to see a great show put on by a bunch of kids, meet the kids afterwards, get a chance to talk to them. So that'll be kind of nice. 
and uh, we're going to do a tour of the uh, sugar mill. We're going to go to another theater. We're actually here in this theater. We're going to see uh, the uh, orchestras. We're going to get a private showing by the orchestra there while we're in San Fuegos, the Botanical Gardens. But you're also getting always in all of these four, four ports <coughs> free time. So it's not just about being with our shore excursions and part of the group, but you're actually getting free time in all four ports because you do get a chance to spend time on your own and walk around and see these beautiful cities. But the shore excursions while we're well, each day, of course, are on. So come on. There we go. Havana, we wrap up our Cuba trip with Havana, so we're going to spend a couple of days there, you know, get the 1957 Chevys and go on shore excursions, uh, go to the nearby uh, the university, uh, see another private rehearsal by a group called Mal 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 Paso. So we're going to see another private show, and this is just for our passengers while we're in Havana, so that'll be kind of fun. So what you're seeing here along the way as you kind of look at this Mexico and Cuba program is a lot of shore excursions that, that you would just never get the opportunity to do anywhere else because we've, we've created these experiences ashore that are very unique to our victory ship and our victory passengers. So like I said, we're going to wrap up things with a couple of days there in Havana. Have lunch at another, uh, you know, actually quite a few people's homes there because when you've got 200 people, we can't put 200 people in one person's home. So we're using quite a few homes, actually. So it's really a lot of fun because you're getting a chance to meet lots of people and have lunch with them and be in their home and, and they really are this great experience, very, very authentic. We've got four different sailings, that uh, five different sailings that we're going to do in Cuba. One of them is actually a three-night. Most are 14 nights, but we do have one three-nighter going in April. That's going to do Havana itself. So if you want something short and sweet and expensive, we've got our little April 12 three-night. So we are going to have that. We wrap up our trip then just kind of getting back to what our folks in the back have done with us. And this may have a, this, a, this Is this the trip you were on? It probably is. I think that there we go. That wasn't planned, but this is actually the trip that they were on when they were with us. So what you're seeing here is this is our ship that's going to do, you know, kind of the Great Lakes, like I say, in the summertime next year. We just finished up this year's northern program because it's starting to get colder in there. So next year, starting in about April or May, we'll be back up into the Great Lakes in Canada, New England. So this way you're seeing Chicago, Detroit, Cleveland. What's really interesting is, you know, you're sailing the Great Lakes, but you're also getting a chance to really see good old America, right? We're getting a chance to see America. What's interesting to me was how many of our passengers are actually from the Midwest. Because even though this is maybe their backyard and they live in Chicago or live in Detroit, doesn't necessarily mean they've seen the lakes or certainly seen them by water. So here we're getting a chance to see all five great lakes, quite a few different itineraries to pick from. <coughs> I like this one because to me this includes the best of both worlds, right? You know, Halifax, Wraps up in Detroit, so you've got you know, lots of different itineraries to pick from. The Great Lakes, Canada, New England, quite a few different itineraries to pick from. Nine days, 10 days, 11 days, 12 days, depending on the trip you pick. So there's a lot of different voyages to, to choose from. And uh, this is one that does all five Great Lakes. It includes the uh, free and post in Thunder Bay. And we'll actually fly from Thunder Bay back to Toronto. So the flight's included, the free and post hotels included. So if you're looking for something different, you like the small ship experience, you want to see new ports of call, visit places you haven't been, then of course victory then we hope would be uh, you know, something you'd consider. Think about it, as I mentioned, our folks in the bag, talk to them, they're going to give you some wonderful uh, uh, glowing reports about us. I think he took 2,000 pictures while he was on board ship, so he's got lots of great pictures that he can show you and I'm happy to share. And uh, so talk to the folks at Roseboro, I know Amanda, Brittany, and everybody well. Talk to the folks there, they're happy to help you. Yes? Uh, my husband doesn't like to get up too early to yeah. get up, and he also uh, likes his more easy pace. How fast pace and how early do you have to get up on these things? So what we generally do, it's a good question actually. So uh, A, a lot, most of our passengers, you know, one way or another, are, are seniors, quite frankly. Because this is, these, these, are, these are experienced travelers that are going with us and people who have cruised a lot and vacation a lot and been to lots of places. So our travelers tend to be, you know, seniors and experienced cruisers. So because of that, though, we certainly have our shore excursions at a pace that, that kind of fit our clientele, quite frankly. Because we know that most of the folks are going to want a slower pace, not be rushed. And what we generally do is we actually have two, two shore excursions to go out. We take half, because keep in mind the ships carry 200 people. What we're usually doing in each port is taking half of the ship out in the morning and then they come back about noon in time for lunch on board ship. 
And then after lunch, then the second group goes up. So you guys could be part of the second group, and then he doesn't have to get up early at all. But either way, either, it's a good question, because either way, the pace of the short excursions on purpose, they're designed to be leisurely and very, you know, uh, uh, not rush. Because we know who's going to this. We know that folks want to take their time and not be rushed. So it's a great question. Anything else? Any other questions? Now's your chance. Otherwise, like I say, talk to the folks at that uh, Roseboro. They know, they know us well, and uh, they're happy to help you out. Deals and so deals and promotions, all of our specials actually run through December 15th. So on the flyers that I've got on the table, you'll see Great Lakes, Canada, Cuba, Mexico. Uh, all of our specials run through December 15th. So just be sure to look by that, take advantage of the great deals that are out there. And uh, Roseboro can help you out. But uh, this is going to give you an, an idea of something that you may not be familiar with, but certainly places that may be of interest. Now you know a little bit more about Victory, but these folks at Roseboro can absolutely help you out. So. Thank you very much.